Hello everyone, I'm Captain Mark Noble with Captain Mark Noble's Outdoor Journal. Do you want to catch more fish? I know you do. Pay attention to these tips because I believe they'll help you on your next outing. Now if you do a lot of trout and red drum fishing, you know that the center point on that boat is the live bait tank. And a lot of people, you know, they'll be dipping their bait in and out of that live bait tank all day long. But here's a great way to avoid doing that because you don't know if the people that's with you may have sunscreen or some bug spray on their hands, which will in turn kill your live bait in your tank. Make up a bucket like this right here, a little short bucket or even smaller than this, and put about two to three inches of water in it. And what you can do is, is set six or eight shrimp in that bucket. And if you have people that's, that, that's scattered out around the boat that's fishing, they can actually take this bucket up with them to the front, or you can set it up on the side or even on your chair and look at here. Make sure every time you hook your bait on and you put them in the water, you see these legs down here moving when it gets in the water. And believe it or not, when them legs right there are moving, you'll get three times the bites is if you get a shrimp on there that's tired, weak, or it's been hit one time before, because many times, if this shrimp will, will see a fish coming at it, it'll actually start skipping away from the fish, and when it starts to try to uh, actually get away from the fish, it's gonna encourage that fish into striking, whereas if the bait is more lethargic and just lays there, many times the fish will look at it and swim right on by it and look for something else. So I'll put me a brand new one on here, and I'll put it right back out there again. And I just about bet you within 10 seconds I'll have a bite. Jeff, after you bring in that cast right there, what we're gonna do is move off of this flat. And you know, I'll, I'll explain why. You know, the tide's been going out now for about two hours. And as this tide falls, remember, and be mindful of this when you're down here fishing these tidal areas, when you've got anywhere from six to nine foot tidal fluctuation on a vertical movement is that when the tide goes out and you're fishing a flat, be very mindful how deep the water is around you and also what kind of bottom you have. If there's a bunch of oyster shells that you're sitting on top of, be sure to get off of them before the water gets so low that you can't move. Otherwise, you'll be stuck there throughout the tide. So as the tide goes down, keep a pretty close idea on how deep the water is and a good way to do that is sometimes I'll just stick my rod down in the water and right now I know that it's that deep right here with the boat setting. So right there, look at here, y'all. I got about a good two and a half foot of water underneath the boat right now, plenty enough water to fish in, but in the next 30 minutes, I'll have to get out of here or I'm gonna be stuck in this area. So watch for these things in these tidal areas because you don't want to get stuck because there's always another good spot to fish just right on down the bank a little bit further. And if you're stuck, well, hey, you can't move down there and somebody else is gonna have to catch in fish for you that day. What we did, y'all, the tide's falling out. And you know, this is something to remember. You know, when you're down here in these tidal areas, you know, move from one spot to the next. I mean, there were still plenty of fish where we left, but I wanted to come on down here and just check this spot out, you know, before we went back in the dock because really we've already limited out on red drum, caught quite a few trout. So we've had a wonderful day already. But what we do is, is we came down the bank and knowing the water's dropped down further, we're fishing a little bit further off the bank on a shell point. We're gonna be anchoring about four foot of water, casting inshore, in behind the boat. And then really the bank's right there but right out here, about 50 or 75 yards is where it drops down to about four to five feet. And as this tide slows down and gets down towards the bottom end of the tide, there's a bunch of scattered shell out here on this flat. And right where it rolls down, hey, that's where the trout are going to be biting in a little bit. So if you're in here in these areas and the tide slows down in the place you're fishing, there's no current running by it next to the bank, turn around and throw offshore and get to where there's current because many times you'll find the fish where there's a little bit of current flow. So uh, we're gonna try this spot out here for a little bit, but remember, always come in quiet so that your approach does not spook the fish away. Well, everyone, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna rig up today fishing for these sharks behind these shrimp boats. The rigging's pretty simple. You just need a few basic things right here. And right here we have a 150 pound leader. This is triple fish line right here, but a 150 pound test. A lot of people think that, Hey, this is the same size line that you use on your weed ear back home, and really it's pretty doggone close. But we want to pull off about five feet or so of this 150 pound line. There's really just a couple of things we do here, and the knot I'm going to show you right now is a surgeon's knot. I got a 100 pound regular swivel right here, and I'm just going to take this line and double it over, and then come through the loop twice, just like a granny knot. Now, the proper name for the knot is a surgeon's knot. Snug it down good and tight and then cut off what we call the tag end, which is this end right here. Just clip it off there kind of close. 
All right, and basically we got a line connector right here because we're gonna put some steel wire on this side. But at the other end of your leader, which is gonna be connected to your, in this case, a cork, we're gonna put a surgeon's knot in there too and make a loop at this end as well. And there it is. There's another double surgeon's knot and we got a loop right there to snap a snap swivel into. Take your tag in and cut it off right there. All right, the next thing, we got a 108 pound wire. Now this is single strand wire and we use it, we, we put this wire together and make up the ends by using what we call a haywire twist. Now this is a very strong twist and this wire right here actually allows us to catch these toothy fish and they don't tend to bite through the wire as easily as they can bite through the mono. But right here we have the hook we're going to use today and you can see that. All right, that right there is a Mustad 7766 hook. Now that's what we call a tarpon hook, but it's a six alt size. This is a good hook to use and it's, it's pretty tough. You can catch a real big fish on this right here with the proper drag setting. Of course, a haywire twist is nothing more than simple going through the center, bringing your wire bite like this right here, pinching off and then just twisting just like this right here. Put about, about four or five twists in it and then come around and fish, finish it off with a barrel wrap. Now, a lot of times when we get right here on this wrap, everybody says, well, how do you get that off? Do you just use a, a pair of uh, cutting pliers and cut off? No, the best way to do is to break this off. Let me show you how you do that. You take this wire and you bring it right down by the main leader and pull it around and look at there. The wire came off right there and that's a real smooth end. Now, this won't hang up in the fish's mouth. The hook point will make contact before a rough edge on this wrap. And of course, right here at the other end of the wire, Remember, we had a 100 pound barrel swivel right here on the end of the leader. We go right through the other side of the swivel, do the same thing all over again. Make your haywire twist, finish it off with a barrel wrap, and then come down right by your wire and break it off. And there you have it. Haywire twist, there's your surgeon's knot. And that connects that and makes that leader longer without having to use all wire. But there it is, y'all. And here's what I like to put on the top of it. Now this right here is a, a thunder chicken cork. Now a lot of people are familiar with the thunder chicken cork that's made for uh, trout and red drum. But this cork right here is made for tarpon fishing. It's also made for catching sharks. But anything you're fishing on the top when you're using heavy tackle, you can see I got a snap swivel right here on this end and a heavy swivel up here on this side. These are 75 pound swivels and we'll be connecting them to 50 pound test line. And you'll find that this right here will hold together very well and it'll allow you to fish separated lines. Now see, I could put a snap swivel on this and fish this as a free drift line or I can attach the thunder chicken to it. And now this becomes a cork line. And what I mean by that is when you're fishing, anytime you're fishing, if you're gonna be fishing more than one or two lines at the time, you need to have line separation and behind these boats it's good to have a couple up top and maybe one down deep. Find out which way they're biting the best, then load it up that way and you're in for a good day of fishing. Let's go see if we can get a shark to eat there. Well everyone, I'd like to take just a moment and show you what kind of tackle we're fishing with today. Remember when you're sight fishing, especially for triple tails, you need to make long, accurate casts. So I, I choose to use a specific kind of rod and reel that I can used to make them kind of, them kind of cast. And today I'm fishing with an eight foot inshore extreme rod put out by Bass Pro Shops. Now I'm fishing with a Johnny Morris reel. Now this reel is rated for about eight to 10 pound test line, but that's not what I'm fishing today. I'm fishing 20 pound test line. And the reason for me doing that is because I switched over to the Spectra fiber line. It's probably about the size of six pound test line. And the type of Spectra fiber line I'm fishing is called Magic Braid. It's put, off by, put out by Bass Pro Shops as well. The line floats. Now you know, you've heard me many times before mention fish floating line anytime you're fishing a cork, whether it's trout and red drum fishing or whether it's triple tail fishing out here. But hey, also for top water baits, it works wonderful. And also I'm fishing, of course, the Thunder Chicken cork. Now y'all see me fish this many days, but remember, this cork was made to cast. It's very easy to overcast these fish with this cork. And hey, that's the whole point of the matter. You wanna be able to overcast your fish and bring the bait back to the fish and stop in his line of travel and let the fish swim right into the cork. Now what they'll do is they'll come right into the cork. And if you notice right here below the thunder chicken, we have about 10 inches to 12 inches of leader. Now, hey, this is all the leader we use. 
20 pound test fluorocarbon line here from right here at the bottom of the swivel to the hook itself. And that, that hook that's in that live shrimp right there is a number four size kale hook. And of course this right here happens to be a mustad hook. This right here will work very well. Now remember, there's many times we're out here fishing, we may see a 25 pound triple tail or even a little bit better. But remember, we're out here on the open flats. Hey, there's nothing to hang on out here. It's unlike triple tail fishing around the pilings and the buoys where you need to use 50 pound test line and sometimes 50 pound test leader as well as possibly a steel leader to keep yourself from getting broke off when the fish runs around the pilings. Remember, a lot of the larger fish are caught fishing around pilings, uh, the buoy structure, the buoy line coming out in these channels in these day markers like in the intercoastal waterway and many people go up and fish right beside the piling because the triple tail will come up and butt right up to the piling and hang right there on the lee side in the current. So you put your bait right down there, try all depths, and you can catch the larger fish off the structure. But if you want to do some sight fishing, which is really a novelty and really it's unique to this area right here because right here on this coast of Georgia, this part of the coast, right off of Jekyll Island, Georgia, this is sort of the unique fishery for here because even the guys up and down the coast, like down around Canaveral, another uh, well-known destination for catching triple tails, they fish on the buoy structures quite a bit, but very seldom do they come out here and sight fish them. But right here off Jekyll Island, hey, you can come right here and sight fish these fish almost on any day as long as you got light winds and sunny skies. And look, hey, we're just a little ways off the beach right here at Jekyll Island. And really, if you want to come to a great destination, Jekyll Island is a wonderful place for the entire family. They got all kind of hotels over there and they got summer waves. And of course, the Jekyll Island Club, what a great place to come and stay. Jekyll Island, definitely a family place to come. Triple tail fishing right here off the beach of Jekyll Island, maybe two to 4,000 feet off the beach. Hey, time of your life down here sight fishing right here on the Georgia coast. Remember the Thunder Chicken Popping Cork Spectra Fiber Line, eight foot rod in a light enough weight reel where you can put this small diameter Spectra Fiber Line on the reel and you'll have all it takes and of course some live shrimp to get the job done. That's a flounder. That's a flounder. Basically what we're doing right here, y'all, is we're just fishing a bottom rig. Look at there. He got it right by the boat. A bottom rig with a live shrimp on it. And that's a flounder right there. Straight down. There we go, y'all. Oh, there you have it. Old flatfish. Kind of hard to hold that rascal. As you can see right there, there's both his eyes on that side. Of course, he lays on the bottom just like this. And then when the bait comes across, he just turns up and gets it. And basically what we're doing is uh, one of the techniques that we use, we fish right on the bottom. And we'll actually just slide that bait right across the bottom and work it all the way back to your boat. And usually if there's a fish laying down there, he'll jump right there and get it. Well, everyone right there, you've seen a flounder on the bottom. And now a lot of people, you know, they don't really go out and target flounder. But hey, if you're down here on the coast of Georgia and you want to target flounder, really anywhere you fish in the salt water for flounder, look, this is a great simple rig to use. It's a slip rig. Basically, we got a little egg sinker right here. And this egg sinker is just on the line and it allows the line to slide through it. So if the sinker gets hung, gets hung up a little bit, the fish can still pull the line through the sinker and you can, uh, you can feel the bite, it's real sensitive. And I always use a bead right here, right below that sinker. Now that bead there I use to protect the knot, but also it'll make a little bit of noise when I bump it on the bottom a little bit and help create a little bit of extra attention for the fish to look that direction and look at the size of that swivel. That's only a 30 pound test swivel, y'all. Now most people I've seen over the years, they want to use great big old swivels and there's no need to. We're fishing 10 pound test line, a 30 pound swivel, remember egg sinker, bead, swivel, and then I got probably about 13 or 14 inches of 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader and it's tied, look at here y'all, right down to that number four kale hook. That bait right there is made for live bait and it'll hold the fish real good. For flounder fishing, hey, this rig right here is awesome. We'll also catch speckled trout on them too. But remember, throw it out there, let it roll around the tide, drag it real slow and hey, when you felt the low bump bump, wait just a minute, reel down, pull back and hey, you might have you a nice flounder. I'm gonna put it right back out here again and see if we can get us another one. 
Well, everyone, I'd like to show you what we was fishing with today because really when you go after these redfish, you want to make sure you got a rod and reel that can handle these large fish with the possibility of that fish that you're not expecting getting on there, like maybe a large tarpon. Today we was fishing with a seven foot Ocean Master rod in a TLD 15 reel put out by Shimano. Now we have it spooled with 20 pound test line and you can see this green color line is called the Solar Collector line from Trilene. It's a big game line. This is a great, well-balanced outfit. Now I know for years and years and years, it was very difficult for us to find quality tackle where we could actually go to a store and shop around, but we've got that settled now because we have a Bass Pro Shop store right there in Savannah. And this outfit can be purchased right there out of the Savannah store. And you can go in there and kind of pick through and see the things that you need. Remember, you need to have weights, a good leader, and also good hooks. Remember today we was talking about this circle hook. This is a 11 malt circle hook put out by Mustad. And we have a three ounce egg sinker here on a 125 pound test leader. Now this is a triple fish line. And really, you know, it's kind of like a weedier line that you might see around your house. But this heavy line makes it very easy to handle these large fish. Because really when you're catching fish after fish after fish, if you was fishing a lighter leader material, you'd find yourself retying after every fish that you catch, and that would take away a lot of time when these bites really turn on. So fish a heavy leader if you can get away with it, and it'll make your fishing day a whole lot better. Today we're gonna to be fishing with, um, I would say my idea of what you would expect to use for tarpon down here in Georgia. Now, you can look at this monofilament line we have here, and this is a 150 pound test monofilament line. Now a lot of people has never even seen a 150 pound monofilament line and it is very heavy. I mean most of the people that come down here and fish with me, they, they accuse me of going out to the shed and robbing the weed eater and getting the string off of it. But look, 150 pound line on these large fish is, is very important. Now many times in other locations where the water is just gin clear, I want to drop down and use a smaller leader size. But here in Georgia if the water is a little bit off color, you can get away using large leader material like 150 pound test. Now if the water goes gin clear, you might want to scale back in size on your leader material. Always remember when you're out here fishing, there's not one hook, there's not one leader, there's not one rod and reel that'll cover every situation there is. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll have at least five or six different choices of monofilament leader on my boat at hand at all times. As the conditions change, I'll build new leaders so that I'll be ready for that situation when it arises. Just as if I got small bait that day, I want to have access to smaller tackle. So remember, when you're out here in the salt water and you're salt water fishing, your tackle selection many times has to be much larger than what you'd use in fresh water. And be sure that the reels that you buy for these large fish, the drag work well and you buy a quality product so that it'll hold up to these large battles. So right here, so I got about seven foot of 150 pound leader. Right here on the bottom end, I have a, what we call a, a tarpon hook, but this is a 77, 66 Mustad hook. Now this is a six alt size. Now that's, that's a pretty good size hook, but for a lot of the fish we fish for, we go much larger. But this is definitely bigger than anything I'm using the bass pond back home, and it's a good strong hook, and it'll hold a lot of weight, and it'll last through a long, long battle. I tie the hook on the end, basically just using an improved clinch knot, and then I come down and I make a double granny knot is actually what it is. I just make a loop and run it through it twice and this is used as a stop knot. As you can see I got a lot in a, a knot right in the middle of my leader and many people said well Mark you know that makes your leader a lot weaker. Well maybe it does but it allows me to do something special. I don't want to put a weight on my main line and the reason why I don't want to put the weight on my main line because a lot of times you're in and out a lot and over a period of time the weight's going to drag off and, and maybe even chafe your line a little bit, but I want the weight on this 150 pound leader so that when I'm fighting that fish, this weight is really protected and it stops at that knot. There's no way this sinker right here can damage that 150 pound line. Yes, this knot does make the leader a little bit weaker, but it allows me to keep that weight under control where it won't slide way up my line because remember, out here fishing, we're not trolling, we're anchored up today and we're gonna be casting. And if you're casting with a slip sinker on your line, you're throwing these long leaders, the slip sinker will ride up your line and doesn't, it doesn't really give you a very good opportunity at making a long cast. 
in long cast allows us to have line separation. When we're sitting out here fishing, we don't want all of our lines on top of each other because that'll create tangles. So we want to put a stop knot on our leader, which we've done right here. I got a leader on the main line and right here at the top, we're going to put a surgeon's knot in here. Now, today I'm wearing one of those fancy shirts from Bass Pro Shop, so I call it a surgeon's knot, but I really, it's a double granny. And there it is right here. You can see the figure eight style of the knot. You pull it down tight. And look here, you got a great connection right there to go to a swivel that will be attached to your 50 pound main line going to your rod. Clap, clip off your tag ends so that they won't tangle up your other lines. And basically what we've done right here is we've made up a tarpon leader. And of course the weight size of choice today will depend on the, the strength of the current because anytime you're tarpon fishing you never want to use more weight than you need. So I'll put some on there with a larger weight and I'll go all the way down to a half ounce weight and hey even sometimes I'll put one on a cork or even I'll put it on a free line and have no weight whatsoever. So we'll put them out today see which ones these tarpons want to bite on whether it's the free line or a weighted line or a cork line and when we find them fired up on one way or another we're going to load up that direction and see if we can't get these tarpon turned on and hooked up. One thing you'll like to do once you get out here and you get your line set out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this all over again. I mean last time we tried this, we just set up and tarpon got on there. Hey, it don't get no better than that. But anyways, what you want to do is put a little bit of chum out and this is the way I recommend doing it. You can take your menhaden and cut it into pieces. You got a large menhaden, you can cut it four or five pieces like this right here. And then what you do is you just lay that, that out there in the, in the water and the current is going to wash all that down behind the boat. And what you're going to see is perhaps maybe if you keep this up for a while, maybe 100, 200, 300 yards, maybe even a mile behind you, the fish can pick up the scent and the location of this boat and they'll start coming towards the boat. This is a wonderful asset to increase the number of bites you're going to get out here tarpon fishing. But you got to realize once you start doing this, Hey, it's kind of like a 1-900 call, if you want to use that term. I mean, these fish will come way out of their way to come this direction for this easy meal. But now you got to realize, sharks, tarpon, jack curvel, ladyfish, bluefish, everything shows up because just about everything likes to eat menhaden. So what you're doing when you start chumming like this right here, you're stacking the deck in your favor, and it's almost assured to bring you more bites by the end of the day. And if you pay attention many times, you can see the fish just explode behind the back of the boat. It almost looks like sometimes somebody drops a Volkswagen in the water when these fish come up here behind the back of the boat. It's exciting fishing and it's high impact and high action. So remember, you start chumming, you're putting these pogies out here in these chum slicks, you better eat your Wheaties the night before because these fish right here are big and they can wear you out. Now, however, sometimes the sharks and the Jack Ravel and ladyfish, bluefish, mackerel, perhaps even a cobia might show up here at the boat. So the options are endless. When you start chumming, you're unlocking the doors for every fish that swims out here in these coastal waters. Well, he's a little bigger. Yeah, there you go. Old speckled trout. There we go. That fish is just as cold as ice right there. But there you have it. That's a speckled trout. And what we did here is we had a little bit of a gear change. And uh, I'll show you what we've done. You know, at first, you know, Gary had us out there fishing in about starting out in about two foot of water, got down to around, I don't know, 15 or 16 inches in catching fish. But now what we've done is we've actually just switched the whole scenario. We moved in here to a river, and now we're fishing probably about seven or eight foot deep, and so now we're gonna fish a, a little different style. We're fishing bait casting reels right now, and what we've went to is a slip cork rig. And what I mean by that is, is uh, in here when the tide gets coming in, you'll want to fish relatively close to the bottom for these trout, but you want a nice drifting bait. And, and I guess you can almost say it's sort of like maybe fishing for white perch or crappie up on the river, but we got a tide here. And so what we've done here is we got a leader, which is 20 pound fluorocarbon tied to, in this case, a half ounce sinker with a float. Now this cork, it'll float up and down the line. And if you can look right up here, I'm gonna drop it down there to it. There is the bobber stop. And now you can see the bobber stopped on the line right there because I have a slip knot with a small bead. And what this will let me do is it'll let me determine how deep I want to fish this cork in any given spot. 
because sometimes it may be four foot against the bank, but it might be eight or 10 or even 12 feet further off. And I can find that out by slipping this knot up or down and letting my cork find the bottom. If my cork's laying on its side, I know I'm fishing too deep. I want my cork to fish upright. And as it drifts down the bank, you can keep your bait in a strike zone for quite a long ways if you'll fish it just right. But remember, the whole secret to fishing these slip corks is this knot. Many times I've seen people fishing a slip cork around me and they never adjust their knot for their depth and they wonder why they don't catch no fish. Well, adjust your knot frequently as the tide comes in or comes out and you'll find that the, you know, the depth's gonna change all the time. So stay on that knot, find what depth you're catching your fish in and as long as you're catching fish, don't change your knot. But as soon as you stop catching fish, maybe you wanna check a different depth and you'll find that the fish will bite just fine once again. But remember, slip fishing around these, these docks like this right here in the winter time, hey, a great technique. Remember, long natural drift, small hook still because we want that bait still to swim around out there while you're drifting and you'll catch a lot of fish in the cold winter months. Today we're using Boston mackerel for bait. Now a lot of people like to use squid, cigar minnows, and hey, even sometimes we'll come out here and catch these on jigs. But today we're using Boston mackerel. Let me show you real quick how I like to do it. One way I like to do it, I like to chunk them, but I also like to fillet them and then cut little squares out of the fillet. And they make just right bite size for these black sea bass. So it's real easy to do. All you have to do is just fillet them out. Take your fillet off just like that right there and then come across and cut right across there just like this. Now this is a very soft bait so what you want to do is be sure and hook your bait through the skin when you put it down there. And see, you'll find on each one of the fillets, you can take off pieces about like this right here. And that's a good bite size for these black sea bass. Boston mackerel, black sea bass, love them. But also the snappers in the grouper do as well. This size bait for the smaller fish, bigger pieces for the bigger fish. I'd like to show you what we was fishing with today. Today we was fishing with a 4600 C3 Abu Garcia reel. Also we was using an eight and a half foot Berkley lightning rod. The reason for this today is because we chose to fish a popping cork called the Thunder Chicken. This cork does not require that you put any weight on the leader whatsoever. Actually that cork is designed with a weight built on it already and this cork right here throws like a dart. This long rod allows us to throw that, that leader length that we need to absolutely give us that free line presentation because that's very important. Another thing that I'd really like to bring to your attention along with this popping cork, any time that you're fishing a popping cork or a topwater bait, think about using a Spectra fiber line. And the reason for this is because it floats. Always use fluorocarbon to tip your leaders because that makes your presentation a whole lot better for the fish. They can't see that fluorocarbon leader near as well as they can see this spectra fiber. So use a floating line, your line will stay up, it won't ever sag down and get underneath the water. It'll make your fishing just that much better. Here's one of the pro's best kept secrets, the Thunder Chicken Popping Core. Designed and produced by Captain Mark Noble, perfectly balanced and properly weighted for longer casts, this cork is great for casting the surface feeding fish along bass lines and oyster beds. If you're serious about speckled trout and red drum, you've got to have a thunder chicken in your tackle box today. I guarantee you this cork right here will help you catch more fish. The thunder chicken, pick yours up today at the Savannah Bass Pro Shops.